PDF text stands for Psilocybe Phoneticus Technique. It's made by Robert McPherson. It was first published in the High Times Magazine in 1991. It's one of the most highly recommended methods growing for beginners as it doesn't require any special equipment like a pressure cooker. It's a fairly simple method with only three ingredients and it's cheap to get started. So if you want to learn how to grow mushrooms, this is where you can start. This video is an introduction to what PF Tech is and the first step of the process. This will be a three video series. This video will tell you what you need and how to prepare the brown rice flour cakes and steam sterilize them. This video will not cover inoculation, fruiting, or harvesting. Those topics will be covered in future videos. I'll link all the videos on the end screens as well as in the description to help reduce any confusion about the order. The videos will be split into parts as far as their titles so there shouldn't be any issues. This method requires three ingredients, vermiculite, brown rice flour, and water. Vermiculite is a naturally occurring mineral that's commonly used in gardening and horticulture. It can be found in most garden centers or stores. I get mine from Lowe's. It's about $8 for eight dry quarts of vermiculite. Brown rice flour, like its name suggests, is flour made from brown rice. You can buy brown rice flour, but it's fairly easy to make if you have a coffee grinder or food processor. You can get a small coffee grinder for pretty cheap, and it'll be useful for processing mushrooms later down the line when you learn how to make chocolate bars, when you learn how to do the lemon tech and make gummies. The coffee grinder all around is going to be a pretty useful tool and I would recommend that you get one or something like it at some point. But if you don't want to, you can just buy brown rice flour from the store. You don't have to make your own. Now back to the ingredients. Water is the last ingredient. Tap water is perfectly fine, so there's no need to use distilled or any kind of special water or preparation. If you can drink it, it's fine. Now let's get to it. You'll need one cup of brown rice flour, one cup of water, and two cups of vermiculite. You'll also need one measuring cup. You'll need a medium to large size bowl to mix in. You'll need a spatula or something similar to mix with. You'll need half pint wide mouth jars. These can be found at Walmart and most big box stores. It's important that they are wide mouth so that you can remove the cakes later in the process. You will need a stove or sufficient heat source, a medium to large size pot that's big enough to put a trivet in, and still have jars in the pot with the lid still being able to completely seal the pot. A lid for the pot and a trivet. If you don't have a trivet, you can use extra jar ring. Foil for covering up the tops of the jars so water doesn't drip in. You will need a nail or a drill bit just large enough to make a hole in the lid that a syringe can fit through for inoculation. Now that we know what we need, we can start. To make the brown rice flour, you just want to put a cup of brown rice into the coffee grinder or food processor and pulverize it until it's powder. It helps if you shake it up a little up and down and side to side just to make sure you get all the pieces crushed up in the powder. You want to make sure there's not like big chunks of rice or anything so it gets distributed evenly when you mix it with the vermiculite. Put the two cups of vermiculite in the mixing bowl. Add the one cup of water to the bowl and mix the water and the vermiculite with the spatula. Make sure to break clumps apart and thoroughly mix until all the vermiculite has become saturated. A little bit of extra water in the bottom is fine, but it shouldn't be a puddle or a lot in the bottom. Once it's mixed well, we want to add half of our brown rice flour, and we're going to mix it well and add the other half and mix again. Make sure to break up clumps and rotate everything well. Once we're done mixing, we want to grab one of our jars with the lid off. We want to fill the jar with our substrate, but don't pack it down, just fill it up to the line on the jar. A light shaking will usually make the substrate settle a little. With the clean paper towel, wipe the remaining inside of the jar all the way around. We don't want to leave moisture here as it can make it easier for contamination to get in and get a hole. This step is very important and should not be overlooked. With the inside of the jar wiped clean, we're going to take some dry vermiculite. Not the substrate we prepared, but separate, dry vermiculite. We want to put just enough in to fill the jar up the rest of the way. It's important that you don't pack it down. We need to put four holes in the lid of each jar. We're doing four holes because having more inoculation points will speed up the colonization process. 
with a nail or small drill bit, put four holes in the lid. They should only be large enough so a syringe can fit without getting stuck. Put the lid on upside down so it will be easier to remove later. Put the ring on the jar and secure the lid. Place a square piece of aluminum foil over the top of the jar to block the holes from water dripping in them when you steam sterilize them. Repeat for the next four jar. Now we need to steam sterilize our jars of substrate. On the stove, put a trivet in your pot and put the jars in the pot on top of the trivet. We want to add enough water so that the water level comes up the jars about an inch or two. This way there will be enough water to complete the sterilization process without all the water evaporating. If you don't have a trivet, you can line the bottom of the pot with extra jar ring. Turn the burner on high and bring the water to a boil. Once the water comes to a boil, reduce to a simmer. It's usually three or four on most stoves. The water doesn't need to remain boiling. You're just trying to make steam to surround the jars. If you leave the temperature too high, all the water will evaporate too quickly and mess up the process. In the event that your water level has got too low and is about to be empty, you can microwave water at two minutes per cup on most microwaves and quickly add it to the pot. This will keep the temperature from dropping as low and will return to a simmer much faster than just adding room temperature water. Like I said though, you can avoid all this by not having the temperature too high. The water just needs to be bubbling, not a roaring boil. Set a timer for two hours and check on it every 30 minutes or so to make sure the water level hasn't got too low. Once the two hours are up, you're going to turn the burner off and just let the whole thing sit as it is until it cools off to room temperature. Once it's cooled off, they are ready to be inoculated. You're going to want to inoculate them inside of a still air box, a fan filter unit, or a flow hood. I'll cover this procedure in the next video. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'll cover inoculating the BRF cake as well as colonization. So make sure you look out for part two.